Welcome to this short service for Good Friday. Today is the day when we stop to remember the death of Jesus. The day when we face the awful reality of the cruelty of crucifixion. The day when we resist the temptation to sneak a peek into Sunday and try to avoid preempting the joy of resurrection but to stay in this place of pain and sorrow. We begin with a familiar hymn from our music therapists. It must be hard to speak when you're being crucified. The whole point is that you can't breathe, that the weight of your body constricts your airways. So maybe it's not surprising that the Gospels give us just a few short sentences from the lips of Jesus as he died. There are no long speeches here. No wonderful stories, no explanations of theology, just seven short sentences gathered from the Gospels. Orlando, chaplain at Bradley Court in Huddersfield, is going to read those sentences for us, and each one will be followed by a short reflection and prayer. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Even in that moment of excruciating pain, Jesus turned towards those who were causing it. Those who had condemned him to death and those who had carried out the sentence. Even then, he thought of the burdens we carry the weight of our mistakes and our deliberate intent to hurt or offend or neglect. He knew how much those things weigh us down. He knew that more than anything, we need to be free from those burdens that drag us down and hold us back. Forgiving God, when we are trapped in the regret of past actions or present inaction, when we feel the weight of our human frailty, free us by your forgiveness. Lift us up that we might turn our faces to the light and know your peace. Amen. Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus spoke these words to one of the criminals crucified with him. There were no limitations on this promise, no expectations, nothing to suggest that there was a qualification needed to ensure entry into paradise. Too often we measure ourselves against the standards of our own making. 
We measure success by the jobs we've done, the money we've earned, the possessions we've amassed, the charitable acts we've performed. This man, this thief dying next to Jesus, was not successful by anyone's measure. But that was apparently no barrier to entry into paradise. Welcoming God, remember us when we come into your kingdom. Not because of anything we have done, not because of our achievements, not because of our goodness. Remember us because you love us. That's all. Because you love us. Amen. Jesus said, Mother, there is your son. We don't know what happened to Joseph. Mary obviously travelled some of the time with Jesus and she was there in Jerusalem at the end. That would suggest that the tradition might be true and Joseph had died. In those days, a woman without a husband was at the mercy of her family and their willingness to take her back in. Perhaps they would think that Mary had been nothing but trouble since she was a teenager. Pregnant before marriage, off travelling round the countryside with her eldest son, tarred with the same controversy that he attracted. Without the protection of a man, Mary was facing destitution. So in his last act as a son, Jesus hands his mother into the protection of his best friend. Father God, when our families cannot or do not care for us in the ways we need them to, bring others to support us and care for us and love us. And if there is one near us who needs our care and protection, open our eyes to see and our hearts to love. Amen. Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? With these words, Jesus truly shows his humanity. Now we are given permission to rage, to question, to doubt, to lament. At this moment, when Jesus felt utterly abandoned, he shows his absolute solidarity with us. This is not a moment of failure. This is a moment of honesty and humanity. It is only because of his total honesty that Jesus makes it possible for us to believe that we can follow him, that we too can make a difference, that we too can love to the uttermost. God of humanity, hear our cry. Be steadfast as we reach out to you in faith. Hold us when we cry out in rage or doubt. Jesus has shown us that despite an unimaginable depth of faith, he had no unique privilege of certainty. And in that same uncertainty and doubt, we come to you, sometimes holding on by our fingertips, crying into the dark, hoping against hope that you will not let us fall. Amen. Jesus said, I am thirsty. Again, Jesus shows us his humanity, shows us that ours is an embodied faith, that the Greeks were wrong and our bodies matter just as much as our souls, that they cannot be separated, and we use them together to express our faith. 
just like any other human being, Jesus had physical needs. Suffering significant blood loss and being exposed to the heat of the day would have brought a great thirst. It would be easy to spiritualise these words. We're so used to talking about Jesus' thirst for righteousness or thirst for justice, and those are good and right. But I think here, he simply wanted a drink, no more, no less. Creator God, of course it's right that we should hunger and thirst for justice and for righteousness. We should thirst for a deeper faith and a greater love. We thank you for that sense of yearning and incompleteness that draws us onwards. But help us to remember that you have given us bodies to be nurtured and cherished. Bodies which enable us to care for others, to be your hands and feet on earth. Amen. Jesus said, it is finished. In that moment of being able to do nothing, Jesus did everything. In the depths of helplessness lies all the power that was needed. In the draining away of breath and blood of Jesus' very life, we are shown the power of forgiveness, of welcome, of love, of solidarity. In that moment, the good news was declared. All was accomplished. Powerful God, when we are tempted by the power of the world, the power of wealth or success or control of another, draw us back to yourself. Remind us of the power of love and care, the power of welcome and of standing in solidarity with others. May we hear your call to the ultimate power of self-giving love that through our actions, others may know what true love means. Amen. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And finally, we see the moment of letting go of this life and taking hold of God's life. In the moment of death, Jesus turned to God. Just as three Jews of Auschwitz put God on trial and found God wanting, yet followed it with, now to our evening prayer. So Jesus, who felt so utterly lost and abandoned, in such agony of grief, yet still turned back to God at the end. God who is always waiting for us, with arms open wide. God who brought us to birth and in whose arms we die, embrace us with your love. Give us hope in our confusion and grace to let go into new life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. We finish with another hymn from our music therapists. Final blessing. God of the cross, as we wait in hope for sunrise on the third day, may we never forget that you came into our world, bore our griefs, and died our death upon the cross, so that we might know your love and share your power to change lives. And may the blessing of God creator, saviour and sustainer, be with us all, now and forever. Amen.